Brittany Maynard ended her life on her own terms last weekend. The young woman with terminal brain cancer moved to Oregon where it is legal for doctors to help patients with their own deaths. Brittany became an advocate for death with dignity laws and her decision sparked a national discussion about end of life issues. And talking about the end of life is difficult, yet it is something we will all eventually face. Mm -hmm. And that is why a Madison woman is sharing her pain. Wendy Kreps lost her husband Keith over the summer after a slow and agonizing decline. She credits a gifted Madison physician for showing her that even without a death with dignity bill, an incredible life can end with a beautiful death. This is Keith Kreps in happier times, on the water on his boat, Jollymon. An avid sailor who loved a good beer, Keith was an enthusiastic world traveler. His favorite trips were to the Caribbean with his wife, Wendy, and their two daughters. I love my mother. <laughs> I love my Wendy Helen. <laughs> he was everything to everyone. He was happy, excited, joyful. Three years ago, Keith was just 56 and suffering symptoms no one could figure out after a third joint replacement. He had that joint replacement on uh, the weekend of Thanksgiving. And by our Christmas vacation, which we did annually every year with our kids, he wasn't recovering. He deteriorated very slowly. Um, at that point. It took a long time for him to reach his breaking point. A devastating turning point came when Keith fell in his wheelchair and broke his collarbone. The accident left him bedridden and unable to breathe. And when the doctor came back, um, he sat me down in the waiting room and told me that Keith was going to die. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. Our friend who was there with Keith, his mother knew of Dr. Campbell, Toby. And that's how he came to us. Via text message. <laughs> Via text message. <laughs> Dr. Toby Campbell is an oncologist and the chief of the palliative care program at UW Hospital. You know, anytime you're lost somewhere, right, what would be great is a guide. And I think approaching the end of your life, you can often feel lost and worried and scared. Dr. Campbell says it's difficult for some doctors to tell patients they're dying, which leads some people to die unprepared. Keith described to me a couple of things that were, I thought, pretty profound. The first, he said, uh, you know, if, if my life is a story, I feel like we hit the climax already. And I did it. And now I just feel like I'm in the lingering phase. He had done many things, had a party, and then a second party, and then a third party. And he said, I don't know that I have more energy for more parties. We had a lot of parties in the, bed <laughs> in the bedroom. <laughs> so he expressed himself as ready. Keith was dependent on a breathing machine to stay alive. Because he was home, he had options. I think most would agree that being dependent upon a machine, you could turn that machine off. Mm -hmm. And so we had that discussion. And then he decided, yeah, I'm ready for that. Keith picked the date, August 19th. Surrounded by family and friends, he made his transition. It was incredible. It was so special and it was so beautiful. Keith had a Bloody Mary and a beer and he laughed and we all told stories about how we knew him and how we loved him and he got to tell us right back and we all got to hold him and be with him. It was a gift. It was such a gift. You know it's often said that miracles sometimes don't look quite like we wanted them to look like or we were expecting. And I've told Wendy on a couple of occasions that I feel like I saw a miracle on that last day because in this saddest of times, on this most difficult of days, yeah. everyone was happy. Yeah. And that is, that's a miracle. Wendy is also very grateful to a Grace Hospice Care for their love and support in Keith's final days. She started the Keys to Travel Foundation in Keith's memory to support students who want to study abroad. Oregon, Washington, and Vermont, by the way, are the only states currently with death with dignity statutes, but many believe this will be the health care issue over the next decade. And she hopes that Keith's story will be part of that legacy. Great story, Susan. Thank you. Thanks.